is up guys, Ed Bandicoot 101 here. Another gaming and tech video today guys. So, I'm just booting into my BIOS now and hitting the delete key repeatedly. For a good reason. Today's video, if my system ever decides to boot up. We're in the BIOS. Nah, I think it gets past A2. Boom, we're in the BIOS. So, today's video is an interesting one. As you can tell by the title, the video is about water cooling. Is it worth water cooling a PC? Now, this is a very interesting video because there's so many different angles you can take on it. You have liquid cooling setups like the H100i, H110i GTX, which are considered all-in-one liquid coolers. What I have is the H110i GTX liquid cooler. So this is an all-in-one cooler. It's a box. It comes in a package with the mounting hardware. You stick it in your system. You plug all the power connectors in. You attach the uh, mount to the CPU itself to keep it cold and attach the radiator in with fans on it. Really easy process, no liquid actually handled by you, it's all a closed system, all just plugs in, you read the instructions, you put it in the system and it keeps your system nice and cool in terms of the CPU temperature. So that's what's called an AIO or all-in-one liquid cooler. That's what I have, they're relatively cheap at around £100 for a high-end one uh, compared with other solutions and they are very good at keeping your temperatures and your CPU lo low. Right now, uh, just after doing some intense video editing, in the BIOS my CPU temperature is at 43 degrees and declining with my fan set at about third speed. So we're talking like uh, probably around 300 RPM, I think. So pretty low, pretty low for speeds. Uh, the pump is set on low, so it's all running really slowly, but I'm still in the sub 50 mark after some intense video editing. And uh, yeah, and this is a very heavily overclocked system. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually checking my overclock settings so I can quote them in a minute. I have the Intel Core i7 5820K Hex core, so six core, 12 thread, hyper threaded, uh, extreme X99 CPU. So, this is a very high end chip. It's probably the third best CPU you can get right now. Uh, it's six cores, Haswell E chip on the X99 chipset. All six of my cores are overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz, that's 4,400 megahertz on all six cores. The uh, CPU base clock ratio is 100, so that's the base clock that I'm multiplying by, so it's 100 times 44, which gives me my 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, I've also got uh, my RAM, my RAM's pretty irrelevant, but I've got 2400 megahertz DDR4 in the system. Uh, obviously, you have to have DDR4 for X99. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, CPU speed, and I'm not sure what my voltage is at. Here we go, my CPU core voltage is above the recommended of what you'd run this system at, at 1.270 volts. So 1.27 volts. Uh, it's a fair bit higher than you meant to run this chip at stock, but uh, that's where the cooling comes in. So if you have a high-end liquid cooler, a high-end AIO like the H100i, the H110i, or H110i GTX, H100i GTX, the Corsair ones, there's loads of other brands out there. Most of them are pretty good. Read some reviews before you buy. But if you've got a high-end liquid cooler like the H110i, uh, you're able to push more volts through the CPU and in turn get a better overclock. Now this is my constant overclock. So this is completely stable, never crashes due to a CPU issue. I don't think I've ever seen it crash due to a CPU issue on my system. Never get blue screens. And uh, yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm getting fantastic scores because of the amount of draw calls I can make to my graphics cards because of the power of my CPU. And it's completely overkill for gaming, to be honest. 4.4 GHz on 6 cores isn't necessary. And in fact, slightly higher speed, like 4.6 GHz on 4 cores, might prove better in some games. But, this is what I've got. Better for video editing with more cores, obviously. And I think it gives me a little bit of, I hate to use this term, because it's absolute bollocks, but future-proofness in case games do start to use more threads or more cores in the near future. So that's what my uh, CPU is at. So it's 5820K i7 at 4.4 gigahertz at 1.27 volts. So they're my specs, just so you know exactly what I'm running. And we're going to do some stress testing to show you guys what sort of temperatures we get under a full synthetic load. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So we're going to do a full synthetic load using heavy, a heavy load to put my CPU at 100% usage, so 4.4 gigahertz on all my cores with my fans on my H110i set at both low and high speeds with my pump also set at low and high speeds and I'll give you guys the results to let you know how well my liquid cooler is doing. So guys, just on a stress test at 100% usage at 4.4 gigahertz at 1.27 volts 1.27 volts with uh, 140 watt TDP as the base uh, amount of wattage this thing draws so I'm probably with that over voltage using about 180 watts just from the CPU there I reckon 
which is absolutely disgusting when you think about the power bill, but luckily my mummy pays that, so we're all good. Um, so yeah, we're at 4.4 gigahertz with the fans turned down. I've got a fan controller set to the lowest setting. No idea what I'm running the fans at, but it, I'd say it's around 500, sub 500 RPM because it's absolutely dead silent. We had the hottest core at a beautiful 76 degrees, which I'm perfectly comfortable with anything under 80. So we had the hottest core at 76 degrees and the coolest core at 67. We've had the pump speed maxed out because to be honest, it's not going to make much difference. Pump speed in the pump doesn't make much difference and on maxed out, it sounds a bit, bit less bad than it does at low. With my H110i, I find my, my pump speed, if it's low, it sounds a bit grindy and faster, it just sounds a bit more of a hum. So just going to keep the pump speed maxed out because it doesn't make much difference. So yeah, now we're going to try it with the fans up full white and see if it actually makes any difference to the temperature at all. I reckon it'll be a couple of degrees, but nothing too significant, but I'll report back in a few minutes. So guys, with the fans turned all the way up to 100% on the H110i GTX, that's two 140mm static pressure optimised fans. They're green LED ones, because, well, obviously. So they're the Corsair static pressure optimised 140mm, giving me 280mm of uh, radiator coverage, just for specs there, throwing specs at you. Uh, we didn't go above 69 degrees on the hottest core, with the coldest at 100% load at 62 degrees. That is icy cold for 100% usage on a, uh, on a Core i7 with 6 cores at 4.4 gigahertz. That is basically sub-zero right there. Um, that is absolutely crazy. Like, you, you do not, it's, don't want it any colder than that because it's unnecessary. That was completely healthy and you never have to worry about cooking your chip. So, is liquid cooling worth it? Personally, I think that AIO liquid coolers, especially the mid-range ones like the HATI that are about 60 to 70 pounds or 100 US dollars, or even if you get something high end, the H110 or H100i GTX are fantastic liquid coolers. Not that this video is sponsored by Corsair, but I just really trust them because they're fantastic with their liquid cooling. So yeah, the Corsair range of AIO liquid coolers, the all-in-ones, are fantastic and I'd really recommend one. If you've got an overclockable CPU and you've been using the stock, pro stock processing, uh, stock heatsink like the i5 uh, 55, i5 4590K for example, I know a load of people that bought that chip and leave their stock Intel heatsink on it and leave it running stock at 3 gigahertz. Why? Why? So what you should really be doing is shoving a... Shoving a liquid cooler, even, even with something like that, maybe a H55, the low end one, so it's running at 75, 80 degrees, but at 4.5 or 4 gigahertz, that's much better for gaming because games prefer higher clock frequencies or higher clock speeds on your CPU. That's the best optimum situation for gaming is four cores with the highest uh, frequency possible you can get on your CPU. So go out and grab a liquid cooler, go out and grab an AIO liquid cooler, that's my personal recommendation. Now, of course. This is the other side of liquid cooling. Is it worth liquid cooling over the over high end air cooling? So you can get big air, big like copper heat sinks with fans all over them to put in your case. They're very heavy, so they put a bit of stress on the motherboard sometimes, or a bit of stress on the case. I don't think they look as nice. And you can't tell people that your PC is liquid cool, because that always raises an eyebrow, They're like liquid in your PC, and it's like, yeah, I've got a liquid cool PC that I built. Much cooler. The price difference is negligible, we're talking 20%. And you do get lower temperatures if with a high-end liquid cooler like the H110i than you do with a high-end air cooler. That's just fact. You will get slightly better performance out of a liquid cooler. So I believe that liquid cooling is a necessity for high-end gaming rigs, uh, especially if it's for the CPU. But that also brings me into the final part of this video, which is equally important and must be discussed. And I am no expert in this field. I mean, I've watched a hell of a lot of videos about it, but I'm no expert in it whatsoever. Go and see Jay's Two Cents' channel. Search Jay's Two Cents. He's the water cooling guru of the internet. Absolutely love him. Look at his PC Skunk Works. It is a beautiful masterpiece of a system compared with this piece of junk behind me. But uh, he's got three tight nexes, all custom liquid cooled with orange liquid at the moment. It used to be yellow. It is absolutely awe-inspiringly beautiful and I can't express how much I recommend going and having a look so Jay huge shout out to you big fan uh, but yeah custom liquid cooling really expensive alternative if you're going to liquid cool everything but as you've noticed I've only talked about cooling the CPU so AOs are fantastic for that you with a high-end liquid cooler that's an all-in-one like the H110i GTX you do not need a custom liquid cooling loop to get that CPU temperature through the floor with a decent overclock and the fans turned up, or even low if you're too bothered about a medium temperature. You can shove a load of volts through it and get a fantastic overclock with an AIO cooler. 
But as you can see here, my two GTX 980s, uh, they are both with their stock reference cooler, so they're air-cooled cards. They get very, very loud under 100% load, and I've got, say, Call of Duty running with a frame rate limiter turned off, maxed out, pushing out 150 frames. Obviously, like, they, they use a lot of power, well, they're relatively efficient compared with older generations, but they get hot. They get loud to keep their temperature below the 80 degree point, below the 75 if possible. I try and keep mine around 70, actually, so I have quite an aggressive fan curve on them. They get loud. You can't overvolt them with an air cooler on them to the same extent that you can when they've got liquid cooling in them. So if you want to get your, you've got a bleeding edge PC and you've got two 980Ti's or even two 980's and you want to squeeze another 10 to 20% performance out of them, you can shove a water block on them and custom liquid cool your PC with radiators and fans, coloured liquid, uh, you've, you've got loads of different types of liquid. I, I can't pretend to know I know what I'm on about. I know what I'm talking about because there's loads of different liquids: non-conductive, conductive. conductive uh, you've got mineral oil PCs as well. There's loads of different things you can do to completely custom your PC. It's going to cost a lot, but it does look fantastic. Is it worth it? If you want to squeeze that 20% performance out and be in that 1% performance bracket on 3D Fire Strike Extreme, which even I'm not in, even I'm only in the top 10% on 3D Fire Strike Extreme. If you want to be in that 1% just so you can be there and be a 1%er, uh, you've got to you've got to custom liquid cool those graphics cards because you can't push reference or even aftermarket cards quite as far as custom liquid cooled ones. With custom liquid cooled graphics cards, you can unlock the you can put on a custom BIOS. Very dangerous, voids the warranty of like 99% of graphics cards. In fact, all of them apart from one I can think of off the top of my head, which is the EVGA GTX 980 Ti for the win Kingpin Edition. Unless you have that card. You're going to void your warranty by doing this, completely void it, and if you fuck your card up, it's fucked. You're never getting it back, you need to go and buy another one because you've completely fried the BIOS on it. So, if you want to custom liquid cool it, at your own risk, and at your own damage to your bank account, because you can spend upwards of £1,000 on custom liquid cooling stuff, which I think is ludicrous for 20% performance gain in most areas, but you can have a completely silent PC because of the amount of radiator space. You can have all your graphics cards hacked BIOS, doubled voltage at stupidly low temperatures, with your CPU in all in one loop, with coloured loops running and LEDs and all, all that sick, beautiful stuff. But it comes at a cost, and you're also risking the warranty and all the other stuff in your system as well, because what if it leaks? Because you, you're responsible entirely for building it. If it leaks, that's down to you. You've, you've got to replace the components, where if this leaks, I know Corsair have a policy where they will uh, replace any damaged components if it is from fault of their device. So, personally, I'd rather go for a bit of personal security and not live completely on the absolute bleeding edge, but just be in the top top 5% performance bracket of my uh, of most things and top 1% of worldwide benchmarks. I'd rather be in the top 1% of worldwide benchmarks than in the top 0.1% of the extreme benchmarks, because that's just too expensive for my wallet, and I personally don't think it's worth it. But you can have a silent, stupid gaming PC if you can afford it. And if you can afford it, Go for it. Just go for it, because it is an absolutely brilliant experience. I guarantee that building a custom liquid cool PC is even more rewarding than building a system like this. And probably takes a lot more time and dedication and a lot more planning of the parts as well, because you can get different tube fittings and everything. But yeah, I'd say the conclusion of this video is, unless you want to go crazy, go out, grab a mid to high end liquid cooler with an unlocked CPU, and have a fantastic gaming experience, just like I do, at 1440p or 4K, pushing 60 plus, maybe 100 plus hertz, depending on your resolution, and just have some fun with it. So, big thumbs up for me for liquid cooling, go ahead and do it. AOO coolers are a great place to start, it's where I've started, where I currently am, and I would really recommend grabbing one and seeing what you guys think. They're easy to install, the instructions are out there, and you can watch video tutorials online of how to install it. So go and get a custom, not a custom, an AIO liquid cooler. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at EdBandicoot101. Like my Facebook page at Bandicoot101. Follow me on Instagram, EdBandicoot101. All the stuff is in the description below. So follow me for more vlogs, gaming, tech and other random stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you very soon with more vlogs, gaming and tech videos.